so today's point uh, of discussion is how one can quantify an unknown impurity present into a combination drug product means a drug product containing more than two drug substances which is uh, called as a combination drug product but uh, to be very accurate it is called as a fixed dose combination drug product so how one can understand you know against which i need to quantify the unknown impurity because as the sample contain both the drug substances the source of unknown impurity sometimes may not be clear to you so first let us understand how one can confirm the source of an unknown impurity for example you have a fixed dose combination drug product containing paracetamol and acyclovir so how to identify whether the peak eluting into a chromatogram belongs to a paracetamol or whether it is belong to an acyclovir drug substance to confirm the origin of this impurity you can take support of the forced degradation study so during method development you can conduct the forced degradation separately by taking your paracetamol plus placebo and then you uh, treat the sample for all stress conditions so with this you will understand what are the degradants coming out of the paracetamol drug substance this is one part of the study similarly you will also expose the acyclovir plus placebo combination to the similar kind of the stress testing so with the second set of experiment you will understand what are the degradants coming from the acyclovir so you have now got the degradation product separately from paracetamol and the acyclovir and you can understand or you can identify these degradants these impurity peaks with respect to their respective relative retention time so until this point it's very good to understand the source of impurity peak now so for example uh, during stability study whatever you have conducted during forced degradation if you found something an unknown impurity peak which is uh, neither found in paracetamol stress testing nor found in the acyclovir stress testing this is something a new newly identified unknown impurity during the stability study so you may have the confusion now as during forced degradation study this impurity never identified how i am going to quantify this impurity i means against which drug substance i must quantify this impurity so to solve this puzzle you know there is a there is a very uh, uh, sophisticated way out in case if you are conducting the stability study for very first time for very first time or even during let us say commercial batches also you can use this particular trick you are also going to charge your placebo sample during your stability study and not only placebo but you need to also charge placebo plus individual api during the stability study so how many sample in totality you will have you will have your uh, fixed dose uh, combination drug product isn't it you will have the as such placebo sample and you will have a sample containing your one api plus placebo second api plus placebo so what is the use of this uh, drug api plus placebo sample for example you are analyzing a 12th month uh, long term stability sample and you have come across the very typical a typical situation where you are not able to understand the source of the unknown impurity so if you inject this uh, api plus placebo sample of the 12th month you will get this particular unknown impurity either in api plus, first api plus placebo sample if not in this 
you must get the unknown impurity into the API 2 plus placebo sample. So with this trick, right, you will be able to understand the, the source of the unknown impurity. The source of the unknown impurity. Now this may increase your sample load because you have to charge this individual APIs uh, and placebo mixture. It can also increase your analysis load also. But this is the, I think, most uh, uh, accepted technique to confirm the, the origin of unknown impurity. In case, uh, for example, which is a very atypical situation now, let us say that you have this API plus placebo, the API 1 plus placebo mixture, API 2 plus placebo mixture, and you analyze both of them, but you notice that none of them none of them have this unknown impurity present into your 12th month long-term stability sample. That means this impurity probably could be arising because of the interaction between API 1 plus API 2 and that sample you do not have. And even if you have that, how you are going to, because the, the origin is, uh, you know, uh, is a result of both of the APIs right that this particular unknown impurity has got originated because of the combination or the non-compatibility between the api1 and api2 the further question is how one can calculate this percent impurity present into a sample so you can now uh, uh, we will go to the presentation which is a very simple presentation by the way but before i move on to the uh, this particular presentation where I am going to talk about how one can quantify this unknown impurity in case if the source of unknown impurity is not clear to you. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of the Pharma Growth Hub and uh, I have been in the industry of pharmaceuticals since last 20 years. Now I am on the mission to help uh, pharma professionals helping by giving an absolute clarity on each and every topic as much as possible and for that reason you know i have created this platform called as a pharma growth hub there are more than 1000 plus pharma professionals who have taken the uh, support of the pharma growth hub platform to accelerate their career growth so in case if you also want to accelerate your career growth with the help of pharma growth hub you can find the, the details of the services provided by Pharma Growth Hub in the description. So please go through the description and you will get a suitable offer so that you will be able to take the action. Join the Pharma Growth Hub today itself. Okay, so let us go back to our example where you have a combination drug product, fixed dose combination drug product with the paracetamol having 500 milligram label claim and acyclofenac with the 100 milligram label claim. In case if the source of unknown impurity is not known to you, calculate the unknown impurity with respect to a drug substance having a lower label claim. Let us now further understand what is the basis behind this particular statement that you need to quantify the unknown impurity against the drug substance having a lower label claim. Let us try to understand this question, why this is the so, why this is so. So let us assume that you have a unknown impurity with the 10,000 peak area, right? The response of the unknown impurity is 10,000. And let us say the concentration of paracetamol in test solution is 5,000 ppm. 5,000 ppm is the concentration of paracetamol into a test solution. And let us say the concentration of acyclofenac in test solution is 1000 ppm, right? And let us also say that the limit for an unknown impurity is not more than 0.2%. So then uh, I have injected the, the paracetamol standard with the 0.2% concentration that becomes now 10 ppm with respect to 5000 ppm. And I found that the response is around 1 lakh unit area. Similarly, I prepared 0.2% acyclofenac standard solution that happens to be 2 ppm now. And the response is found to be 20,000. 
So what is the calculation formula to calculate the unknown impurity? Now this is a calculation formula. You must have seen this calculation formula into your standard test procedure. So by using this calculation formula, if I calculate the uh, percent unknown impurity with respect to paracetamol, I will find that 0.02% is the impurity concentration. I have just substituted the value in the above calculation formula. But I did, I did this calculation by taking a paracetamol API. And uh, you can easily understand that the concentration or the label claim of paracetamol is uh, higher as compared to the acyclofenac. Let us now understand the calculation of this similar unknown impurity by taking the drug substance with the lower label claim which is the acyclofenac. So again uh, this is the calculation I did with the acyclofenac. And when I substitute the, the details of acyclofenac in the same calculation formula, I found that the, the, the result for the unknown impurity is now 0.1%. So you can easily understand that why the lower label claim drug substance should be used while calculation of an unknown impurity. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of informative videos.